So hello and welcome. This is Erica Glessing and you are joining me for the Erica Glessing show where you receive eight minutes of daily inspiration for entrepreneurs and lightworkers. And every single time we have a guest, you can pop over to the Erica Glessing show.com. You can find out more. You can follow the links. You can follow the energy and you can see lots of beautiful books um, created by our sponsor, my company, Happy Publishing. So today's guest, she's just stunning. She surprises me all the time. I've had the most fun working and playing with this woman. She's always in a different part in the globe, and today she's actually at home. Welcome, Daria Hansen. Thank you, Erica. Pleasure to be here. So what what country is your home now? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great question. It is Canada at the moment. Oh, uh, <laughs> nice. nice. Yes. Mm. And I've really been enjoying some of your messages about interesting point of view. And I don't think that's where we're going to start, but I just got shown like, what if you just shared what that was for people who may not be familiar with some of the different tools um, tell me a little bit about interesting point of view and what that is for you and what that changed for you. Wow. Uh, interesting point of view is something I could talk probably for days about at this point. Uh, five years ago, I was introduced to this access consciousness tool and I dismissed it because it just sounds so weird that for every point of view that comes up in your world, you have to say interesting point of view or have this point of view. And when you start playing with it, you actually turn it into interesting point of view. You have this point of view <laughs> because most of us need to actually defend uh, our point of view to prove that we're right. <laughs> True um, that, right? So um, we actually tend to use this tool against us rather than for us. And then two years ago, I asked the founder of Access Consciousness, Gary Douglas, if I were to use one tool to really set myself free and to create my reality rather than being um, fighting against this reality and what's showing up for me in my life. And he suggested that I would use uh, interesting point of view. I have this point of view for every point of view, feeling, emotion, and any kind of resistance that shows up in my world for six months at least. And oh my he, goodness. <laughs> I know. That's exactly what came up for that's me. That's a lot went, of work. That's I'm a lot like... of work. That's a long time. I want it yesterday or right. now. I don't want now. it in six months. Exactly. <laughs> So I didn't do it. And two years later, a few weeks ago, I went and I looked back at that choice and I, and I asked myself, wow, where would I be right now, today, if I actually used that tool? Because I found myself, I actually oh, caught myself right? having points of view about things. And it's like somebody would say something and I would have to defend what I felt about it. Or if I had a point, of, if I had a suggestion or idea, if somebody didn't jump up and start yelling and screaming how wonderful it is, I would go in a rawness of me and go and look for like what's wrong with my idea instead of going, wow, interesting point of view. I have this point of view that my idea actually is going to work. Wow. And, or it's get, like has to be heard or yeah. has to be received. Like, what if it was just for me, just for fun, and never tell anyone? And if you tell someone, don't make it significant that they don't respond the way you would like them to respond. True that. So I looked at that and I went, wow, okay, if I were to really use this interesting point of view tool for everything that comes up for me, anytime I feel resistance or rejection in my world or alignment and agreements, like, yeah, you, like, thank you for agreeing with me. This is awesome that I'm talking about this. So like, <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And I started playing with this tool and the freedom I started getting from dissociating the polarity of the right and wrong or good and bad yeah. from everything that was showing up in my world. Yeah. Do you know, Daria, I did that with my, um, I did that with some of my parents' point of views. Because I had started taking all this time seeing how wrong they were. Yeah. And then I also, like, saw this, all this stuff of how right they were. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of really messing with my head. And I decided at one point to not choose to see any of their actions with any charge at all. Mm -hmm. And just say they were just actions. And 
the other awareness I had that was really funny is because I'm in my 50s and I was like, well, anything they told me 50 years ago has changed. Exactly. <laughs> so everything they told me was basically a lie today. But the thing is, like, you, like, I'm so grateful you brought this up, is that when we have a point of view that we are correct in our world about uh-huh. anything, even if it was an awareness, but we uh-huh. make an awareness correct, uh-huh. that moment the awareness turns into a point of view, you can't see or perceive what everybody else is looking at. Wow. Or what they perceive. Yeah. So then there is this dissociation of two worlds that happens and you can't communicate and create together. Now, both of you have to resist and react and defend wow. your positions. And then um, I just want to, since it's an eight minute podcast and we're just about at the halfway mark, there's something that you're cooking up and creating that is super delicious. And myself I have to tell you as a backdrop (laughs) just since everybody's listening that I am personally like deeply into this and I studied French and Spanish and Chinese and Japanese and Russian and I could learn all those different languages and I learned lots of little bits of languages growing up because I loved talking to people from all over the world and so I have no idea if this is going to be Uh, pertinent but tell us a little bit about your work um living or life beyond your cultural reach yeah what if you could live beyond your cultural reach that's a question that basically creates a curiosity and a space to go what does that mean and um to me living beyond your cultural reach is actually living out of definition, out of control, out of limitation, out of linearities and concentricities, meaning any kind of point of view, and out of um, form, structure, and significance. So basically living from choice, what can I choose? Living from desire, what do I desire? And living from knowing that you can have it. And you all you have to do is actually reach for it. So, so what do you mean by cultural reach? What does that mean? Cultural, well, that's what I'm, I mean. Beyond everything you grew up with um, and thought, that's what you have to be or do, or this is how your life will be, because based on the points of view or beliefs or oh cultural right? um, distinguishment and difference. Yeah. yeah. So looking at me being born in Russia, and raised in Russia in a very middle class, less than middle class family, I never actually imagined that I could live the way I live now, where I travel two weeks out of a month all over the world. And I have a six-year-old daughter that I, ha- I make it happen. Like I, it actually works for our family. <laughs> um, I've been divorced twice, and I'm a total black sheep in my family. And I've been... I've been, I've been, uh, I've been seen. Oh my goodness. I just would com- like everyone who's listening to the podcast that doesn't have <laughs> access to the website um, of the podcast to go look at Daria Hansen, because I'll tell you what, if she's a black sheep, there is like no hope for the rest of us. <laughs> 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 the culture, the cultural reach in my world when I was um, oh. raised in Russia would have been having a family, cooking the dinners for my husband, making sure I make sure that this marriage works and don't think oh of my goodness. anywhere else. You know the weight on that? Make sure that I make the relationship yep. work. Yep. Oh my gosh. If anyone else felt the charge on that like I did, uh, Daria, why don't you go ahead and just do something to clear that space? Because that was like, well, everything that brings up for you. <laughs> so all the resistance and reaction and alignment and agreement you have with this point of view that you have to or don't want to or don't will never or will always make sure the relationships you are in work. 
<laughs> interesting point of view. You have this point of view. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Wow. And that's the tool. That, thank you, Erica, for like starting this show with this tool, because if you actually perceive the charge is still there and I'm like, I'm letting this step here. But if you look at this charge right now and in your world, you go interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Did you notice the heaviness is actually dissipating? Well, it's- you know what showed up for me was like um, some of the things I noticed on social media is people saying things like, um, oh, you know, congratulate me. I'm on my 38th anniversary. Or here's my picture with my beautiful significant other, right? Mm -hmm. And here, look, I'm so happy in my relationship. And then we get culturally raised to say, if we at some point in our lives are not fully perfectly (laughs) happy in every part of a relationship, then all of a sudden, like, it's like, we have screwed up or we have like committed a crime or, you know, now we're divorced. Cause, and I even feel like I left my, you know, horrible ex in 2011 and he was an alcoholic, abusive, yucky person. And, ugh, and I still sometimes get that voice in my head. Why didn't you say, stay with the father of your children? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're raised with a point of view that once you choose, you can't choose anymore. You made the choice. And that's what I was told when the first, I was in my first marriage, Daria, you chose it. We asked you not to choose it. So now you have to be responsible for your choices. Right. And what did I do? I suffered for another year until I couldn't suffer anymore. And I still left. And it's like, what's the point? Once you chose, you have another choice. And then you have another choice. Doesn't mean you don't have to be... Um, looking at what your choices create and what choices you're actually making. And there are some choices that you have to work with, but you also have to come from a place that you have choice and you are choosing it rather than going, I don't have choice anymore. I got married. So now I have to stick here. Right. Or um, any kind of those kinds of relationship things where you get stuck um, I love that you just bring that light in to say to start opening up the doors to what might be possible in the future. And um, just tell us a little bit more about the Living Beyond Your Culture Reach movement that you're going to be um, sharing with everyone and how they can reach you, how they can get more of Daria. <laughs> <laughs> well, one more thing that I want to mention about Living Beyond a Cultural Reach is that most of us think that we're defined by what we do, what kind of job we do. I'm an accountant or I'm a financial advisor or I'm a teacher or I'm whatever else you are. What if that didn't have to define you ever again? What if you actually have total freedom and choice in being and doing whatever you'd like to be and do in the world, whether it is inside your cultural reach of your education or your upbringing or not? Mm -hmm. What if there's nothing impossible for you? Yeah. All that is required of you is to reach and desire something different. Hmm. Let it show up. That's my invitation for today. Um, And where would you find me? Um, I actually have a few websites. And currently, I would like you guys to go to the elegance of being.com. The elegance of being.com. It's an invitation to create from least effort to generate most impact in life and that's the other invitation of living beyond your cultural reach is to create from ease not from hard work thank you so much daria thanks so much for coming have a great day thank you erica thank you bye bye today's show was brought to you by audible for a free book that you can listen to anywhere Go to audibletrial.com slash The Erica Blessing Show and enjoy a book from our wonderful sponsor, Audible.